Hello everybody, my name is Chris and you're watching the Crazy Volucris and today we are playing Dungeon Universalis. Less than a day walk away we found a hidden house in the forest. Some locals had noticed strange figures in the small forest. This could be the bandits hideout. Sly suggested we take a look around first to find the best way in and out in case we needed to move quickly. Sly slipped away and came back a few minutes later. Quick, some men have gone into the village. Now we have an easy time. Let's get the little boy out and go. We set off and Kronk did not miss the chance to enter the house first. So, for this um, scenario, there are some special rules. For example, we don't um, roll the um, obstacle die when we move more than uh, out of our safe zone. We only roll the obst obstacle die while um, revealing a new section or opening a door. That's the first thing. The second thing is we only have 15 rounds to rescue Daniel. I upgraded some components. I bought uh, from the Black Eye a role-playing game. I, uh, they are using kind of fate points as well. This is for the fight and um, I use them for keeping track if my characters have uh, this is act, uh, not yet activated and this is activated. And, uh, I love this, this Black Eye. So this is one upgrade. And the second upgrade is I bought a metal coins for uh, for the game. They are from uh, another board game which is called Cora. So this fits perfect because the the golden ones are five and the silver ones are one. And you already hear it clanky. I love this. All right, so then uh, let's get going. First, for heroes, and I will start with, well, I will start with Krog. Here we go, one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, then neck will go, one, two, here and there. On this side, then uh, Thoralf will go here. Cyrilus will go here and Sly will step in front of the door and will open the door. So we roll the obstacle die on a one. There is a Oh no, there's two. Okay, so we increase this to two. Okay, so and now we have to roll if there is um, if there's an encounter. No, there's not an encounter. All right, so then the round is over and I go start with the next round. And therefore I will start with Kronk. Uh, One, two, three, four, five. And Sly. Uh, on the neck. One, two, three, four, five, six. He can run, doesn't matter. No, there's nothing. And one, two, three, four, five. And with his action, he will open this door. So we have to check the obstacle die on a one or two. And there's nothing. And well, let 
let's see what he revealed. All right. Ah, and uh, we have to check if there are any creatures. Which is not. And then we start with round 13. Or 13 more turns. I, I guess we're gonna run. Run. Kronk runs. Thoralf runs. Sidilus runs. And Neck runs. Alright. So that's for this round. Next round. See. 12 more turns. And this is really tight. This is really tight. So the first action, what we're gonna do is um, Sly is gonna reveal the section. Therefore, we have to roll an obstacle die. And there is something. Poison darts. Affects the square occupied by the character who triggered it. Suffered one poison dart impact. The dart causes one damage dice. However, if the player loses one vitality point, it will cause two extra damage dice against natural armor. If these causes lost one or more vitality points, character gets conditioned poison. So this is also for an... Uh, this map tile so he can spot it with a 10 uh, first of all this um, costs three three points so then the ADP is down to 17 and you gotta make a spotting roll he got a spot plus one and uh, with a neck plus three, so a seven. A seven will do it. It's an eight, so he spotted it. And uh, we have to disarm it with an eight. So we got plus one. Because we got um, skilled hands, he disarms the trap, which is enough. So that's okay. And I set it back to one. I don't think that. Daniel will be in the first rooms. I guess he will be at the end of this lair. So then um, with his move action he moves one, two, three, four on the next space. So this was Sly. Neck will gonna activate and go one, two, three over here. Kronk is gonna activate and go here and with his action he reveals therefore we have to roll the obstacle die which is not nothing happened okay ah we have to roll if there is a, a creature which is not but this will be eminent soon. I will activate Thoralf. He will run. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Which door we gonna use? This one or this one? I don't know. Okay, Cyrilus will move or run. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I. I would take this one. So that's it. Everybody moved. Now we 
then the next 11 turns so what's what we gonna do next so um, we have to it's always the best when sly is gonna open the doors because otherwise when they're trapped it's it's not that good uh, on the other hand we we are in a very hurry so we have to take the risks but i will run with neck oh this is only 10 spaces one two three four five oh yeah that's that's way enough okay thoralf will go here and he will open the door And I rolled a one, which will trigger locked door. So this is uh, costs one. Okay, this is a vitality five armor five door, or we can try to pick the lock. But therefore, we need a slide to do this. Um, so this we, we will lose another turn. So one, two, three, four, we'll go here. Crunk will go here, so that's it. That's the end of the turn. Next turn. Yeah, this is, uh, we have to swap places. So Thorov already activated. Slide just makes one step and with his action he uh, with his quick action he equips his lockpicks and he will try to pick the lock which which he needs a nine Ooh, yeah okay this is this is enough we solved this obstacle and now he opens the door and this is another room so we have to roll if there's uh, an encounter which is so i've set this back to one and we got enemy spotted i have to roll what we get on the chart enemy spotted uh, enemy spotted all right so we roll a d a d6 and add plus one because we uh have for every 30 vp so we got 59 so this is only plus one I rolled a four, so that's a five. This is a uh, cost six VP. So now he's down to ten. And we got one dwarf bandit with battle axe. Oh, here we go. One dwarf with a battle axe. One shooter with uh, an arquebus. I don't have an arquebus, um, so I just use uh, this one with a long bow, uh, with a with a short bow. And two redfall bandits with short sword and sling. So uh, two rats. So first of all, I have to place the red bandit two spaces away, and then the shooter, and here the dwarf. Then we have to make an initiative roll with the closest. This is the red. They got uh, no bonus, we got plus three. So this is definitely higher and um, both die are higher than the intelligence of everybody in the room. So we uh, caught them by surprise, which is all, all very good. 
So we already got only nine, nine turn, turns left to get this bugger out. Okay, so Sly will activate. Go one, two, three, four, and attacks the shooter from behind. Oh, this is crap! And missed. Then Cydalus will go one, two, three, and he will cast Fireball. For one mana. Ooh, yeah! Which he totally cranked it. So this is. Uh, <laughs> normally it's five damage die, but uh, uh, now it's seven with the double crit. And uh, of course he uh, aims at the dwarf. Which got, um, I have to check, he's got an armor of four. So this means he got already uh, four hits and he's wounded. This is, this is a very good start. And he's wounded. And the two rats on the side get everybody at five. So they have uh, a natural armor of three with the leather armor of four, also four. So uh, this red first, that's a four, four damage. So the, this red blazes up. And the next on this side, also three damage and they only got three health so this rat is also killed Whoa. <laughs> so, well this this was kind of real ep epic so then um, Kronk we're gonna activate one two three four and he will attack maybe he he makes a brutal blow because uh, the dwarf is already wounded and from behind. So the dwarf only got a fighting skill of two and we got a si fighting skill of four. So we, we are plus two. And this is a hit with a critical, uh, two criticals because uh, we made the brutal blow. So we got uh, four damage die for the strength, two for the weapon and two for the criticals and every four makes a damage which overkills the dwarf. Then uh, neck will gonna activate one, two, three, four. Uh, two, three, four, five, six. And he's still activated from behind. So he will attack from behind. The Human Bandit is a shooter, so he's unarmed. So you got a fighting skill of one and neck from three, so it's a plus two for neck. And it's a hit. Two damage die against natural armor of three. Yeah, it's a three, so that's two wounds. For each wound, uh, we, we just roll another die. So if we go uh, three or higher above his natural armor, then he's poisoned as well. Which he is. So this uh, so he's poison as well. So he got a minus one. All right. So this was uh, neck and the killer red, and then uh, Thorolf will activate one, two, three, four, and 
and uh, he's kind of well, he could could not run into combat. Yeah, but that's it. That is the round. Uh, now the he can activate and tries to disengage. He got a, a dexterity of three, uh, but he's poisoned, so he needs an eight to disengage, which he missed so his activation ended now we prepare for the next round so eight more rounds i think we will make quick work of this shooter we do it one two so thoralf will step up and show him his axe Oh, but he really defended. Okay, so then uh, Kronk will make a brutal attack again. So he got a fight only of four, but the poor shooter is unarmed and poisoned. So he got a of one, so um, he got a plus three. So that's a nine. But he got a 10, so he defended as well. So then he's very... <laughs> All right, okay, he resisted. Then Sly, gonna activate. Uh, oh no, we, we just, we, we, we do the killer rat. We make knack. Missed. And Sly. Oh, that's a hit. Definitely, that's a hit. Okay, so that's uh, against an armor of two, which kills the shooter. And then um, <coughs> uh, we got Cydalus. Which will activate and go one, two, three, four. And with his action, we gonna open this door because we have to be quick, quick as possible. All right, then we roll an obstacle die if something happens. No, it's not. And we roll if there are any um, encounter. They are not. But this is the objective room, though so there is an enemy spotted. There always are enemies spotted. So we roll 1d6 and add plus 1. So that's a 4. And a 4 is. Two human bandits with sports sword and shield, two shooters with crossbow, one warhound. Ooh, and this is on six VP. Okay, so two human bandits with short. We got this. Two shooters with crossbow. I only have. Well, we will we will use uh, this models and they have crossbows and one warhound. Okay, so I get the cards. Shooter, bandit, warhound. I have to check there is. Uh, Oh, here we go. Daniel, may I introduce the eldest son, Daniel. He looks like old for him. No, oh, well, he's the eldest son, all right. So he sits right next here. And wait to be rescued. First we do the fighters, I guess. So that's the placement. And then we have to check the for initiative and now this is very vital 
to win the initiative, otherwise we are. Cyril has uh, got nothing but Mac is within three spaces, so he, he shrieks and Cyril is no, so it's a plus two. And this bandit got nothing, um, but he got his hound, so get it plus one. So we got only a, an advantage of plus one. This is an 11, and both are higher than the intelligence of everybody in the room. So we caught them by surprise. First of all, I turn them around. And then we can move them, each one. Maybe we do it like really like this. One, two, three. And I go, I step closer, I start with Cyrillus, and then I cast Fireball right here on this fella. And this guy with his, um... oh yeah, well, the next round started, so we have seven turns left. Oh, this, this will be really tight, everything will be really tight. So now, Cyrilus um, casts Fireball again and successfully. So the this guy, um, this is the shooter, which got um, an, natural, an, an armor of three, so they are not protected by anything. Only one! Oh, better than none. Okay, so... And the other got uh, three. So we start with this one. They got shields, but from behind they don't count. And... Um, but they have still got uh, leather armor. So they got an... Uh, um, they choose shield or leather armor. So they have got a natural armor of three. So this one. Oh, this is nothing. The shooter. There are two wounds. The dog. And also two wounds. And this fighter. Got also two wounds. Okay, Kronkul activated one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and he will attack with uh, the combat master. So he will attack this guy first from behind. So this guy got a normally a fight of three, so now he's got a fight of two. We got a fight of five, so this is a hit. Let's give him six damage die from behind. We got a natural armor of three. And this kills the bandit right out. Next attack on the shooter in the middle. It's a seven. He also got a seven. But I'm attacking from behind and my fight is higher, so this is also a hit. So I got a natural armor of three. And this is way enough to kill this guy as well. This is a bloodbath. Kronk is a... This is crazy. Alright, so this was Kronk. Mm, next up, one, two, three, four, two, one, two, three. He steps behind him and attacks with his battle axe. And hits. It's not a gracial hit, but he hits. This is more than enough to 
do this. So that's five damage die. And we reduce the armor by one with the battle axe. So he got a natural armor of two. So now he got a natural armor of one. Um, three, now two. So that's three wounds. He already got two. So he is dead as well. Now we got Kronk. Because one, two, three, four, five. And he got the chance to attack the dog from behind. Which hits with a critical. So he got uh, also six damage die and normally got a lateral arm of three with his axe of two. Which kills the dog. They, they are really, really strong right now. Now, Nag. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now everybody got activated and now the, um, the shooter can activate and he will turn around and well, shoot at easiest to hit with the lowest uh, armor who is easiest to hit, they're all easiest to hit. Lowest armor is Kronk or, so this is not easiest to hit, he got no line of sight. Uh, the most damage, so he will shoot at Kronk. He got an bow skill of three, uh, he is Dexterity 3, Kronk is 5, so he got a minus 1, so he needs an 8, which he misses. Now we have 6 le turns left. Who will kill him easiest? This will be Kronk, but Kronk will also deal a lot of damage when we have to crack this open. I'm not pretty sure I have to check this. this Rainforce Thor as armor 6, vitality 6. This is tough. Okay, so 6-6. Six, six. Alright, so now. Mm, then Kronk. Come on, Kronk will step up. Kronk will, <laughs> will slice him nice. Which um, he does with a 7 uh, and a critical hit. which does three damage. Well, uh, this will be way enough to kill the shooter. So Kronk is done. Sly will step up and try to, to hack this thing open. Hits automatically. Can we do a hit roll? So if we critically hit, do we do more damage? No, we hit automatically, so there's no way to do this. So, But uh, with the axe, it's got only um, an armor of five. So every five. Also, that's three. It's only three. The Thorolf will step up. Hits automatically and will um, also deal a five die and also on fives. So come on, Thorolf, three more fives. Wow! And with a snap, he cracked this door open okay now I can activate him like a civilian so we just give him the card here and he can step outside on everything so we first will activate so this was Thoralf so we will activate Nag 
which will run with uh, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So he, like, is halfway out. Then uh, Cyrillus, oh no, we, we left, left him run. Eight. Then Cyrillus will run. So that's it. And that's it for the turn. So next turn. Five. We will start with Kronk. He will run. Ten. Ten spaces. Then we will activate Daniel. He will run eight. Neck. Thoralf, and Sly, that's it. I don't know why we should do this, because I think we, everybody will get out. So we start with Neck, Neck is out, Cyrus is also outside the dungeon. Then we do it with Daniel. Oh yeah, eight. Then Sly. Then Kronk. And Thoralf. That's a gonga line. Three more rounds. <laughs> We start with uh, Daniel, then Kronk, oh, he stumbles. Uh, I have to check. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, what happens? What happens when you blunder while running? Half of his normal movement. Okay, so two point, also three. One, two, three. Okay. Then Sly. And Thoralf. He surpassed Kronk. That's funny. Okay. Two more rounds. Two more rounds to go. We activate with Danya. Which got out. We activate Sly, which got out. We activate Thoralf, which got out. And we activate Kronk. And he got out as well. And in the meantime, I just realized that I forget to loot the killed bandits, but we ran out of time. This is more a race. Okay, now we see we got here to um, Marker, which moved the last time. And um, now we are just here, uh, rescued Daniel and now is coding to Norkfall. So we will enter Norkfall and adding one turn and therefore moving the marker one step closer to us. All right. And we have to roll for uh, 
event in the city. Oh. It's a three. Oh, oops. Check. <laughs> a two plus. So and this will be a, a friendly alchemist. One random hero among those who can cast spells. Meet an old friend in this town. The hero can try to pass an intelligence roll. If he does, he gets one free random potion. Oh, this is nice. So um, this will be Cyrilus and he has uh, intelligence of five, which he will achieve. And uh, we will see a random potion. We make 3d6. Let's come on. So that's a nine. Greek fire. Is this a potion? That is a potion. All right, so we get a Greek fire for free. So this uh, that's it for the city event. With Danny in tow, we arrived in Norfolk after dark. The guards were wide-eyed when we arrived at the castle's gate with Buchter's son and let us through immediately. Bokhtar was generous and rewarded each of us with six coins. Moreover, we were his guests and did not have to pay anything for the duration of our stay. And even the training ground was for free. The next day he invited us to a feast and during the meal he leaned toward me. Plum must come to a parliament on trade matters, Bokhtar said. Even though he has the protection of the lord of the city. You know, all places can be dangerous. And I cannot trust the promises of barbarians who used to live like beasts in the wilderness. I would sleep much more soundly knowing that you and your companions will accompany him. You won't regret it, he smiled. Well, I guess escorting a scribe shouldn't be too hard. We agree. He laughed, raised his cup and calling out, To you, my friends, savers of my son and allies of Nogfall. And now we are resting in the uh, inn for free. And we are rolling now a six die to see if there's another thread marker for the map. No. This time it's not. And while we are resting, the uh, marker also advances one more time. And we can train at the combat school for free. I have to check this one as well. And we make intelligence tests. So, Kronk uh, got an intelligence of four. So uh, that's nothing. Sly got an intelligence of four as well. That's enough. And he gets five, which means um, you get one experience point. Correct again, only three experience points in combat school during the same year. Okay, so Kronk got, uh, no, Sly. Sly got one experience points during the training. And then we make uh, Cyrilus. Oh, well, uh, okay, so he passed it. And he will make a five. That's also one experience point. That's nice. I don't know exactly how I will keep track um, with the once per year, only three times, but I will. Um, just write down it on the back as an advancement in campaign turn 17 so maybe this will help i i hope this will help so this will uh, advance him up to five and settle us to three experience points 